Hi friends, Christopher here with Fujifilm with another From the Workbench video. In this session, we're going to cover creating your own custom film simulations. So we'll define what a film simulation is, we'll show you where to save these in the menu, and finally, we'll go over each one of the image quality properties. So let's get started. So a film simulation is basically a color palette that you pick based on your subject, and ours is based off of our film stock. So you might be familiar with terms like Velvia, Astia, Provia, Acros. Each one of these will change, say, saturation, highlight tone, shadow tone, sharpness, as well as noise reduction, among other things. So let's take a quick look at this chart here. So this chart represents our film simulations and where they actually sit between saturation and tonality, basically contrast. So the reason why I like to show this chart is it's going to be your starting point of which you base your film simulations off of. So say if you chose Velvia. Velvia is a very saturated, contrasty film simulation. So anything you do on top of that, as far as increasing shadow tones or highlight tones, is going to create that effect even greater. So if you're looking for a very flat profile, you might stick with something along the lines of Eterna and maybe add a little bit of saturation to it. Or say if you like the tonality of Classic Neg, you could do that, then maybe reduce the highlights a little bit or increase the shadows, and we'll go over each individual one of these. But first, let's cover where we actually set this up on the menu, and you'll follow along. So after you've hit the menu OK button, you should see the regular menu pop up. And we're going to stay within the IQ portion of the menu today. So let's scroll to the last page of it, and we should see two settings. We should see Select Custom Setting, which is one of the ways you can toggle between your custom film simulations, the other being done through the Quick Menu, as you can see here on the screen. The secondary option is Edit Slash Save Custom Setting. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And you should see seven custom names pop up, custom one through seven. Each one of those has a different film simulation, but you can make them whatever you want. So after selecting, say, custom one, which we're going to do right now, we should see save current settings, edit custom name, edit and reset. So save current settings is basically going to take the settings that you already currently have on your camera and save those to the custom bank that you've selected. Keep in mind, it's not going to save everything. So focus area, say focus type, aperture, shutter speed, those aren't going to be saved here. But any other image quality options will be. The second option is going to be custom name. And so this allows you to basically name your preset, whatever you'd like. If you want an option for portraits, you can label it portraits. If you want an option for black and white, you can do that as well. Next is going to be edit. And this is generally how I save my custom film simulations. It makes it a lot easier because I should see a new menu pop up. Anything that is white I can select, and anything that is gray is not selectable. And so, once I've gone through and made these changes, I can hit the display back button, and it's going to say, set OK with your custom name. And once I do that, it's going to save those current settings to whatever bank that you've chosen. And last but not least, you see Reset. This is basically going to change the settings under that custom name and set it back to factory default. Now that we know what a film simulation is and where to find the custom banks within the menu, let's take a look at the image quality properties that we can change. Keep it in mind this is generally for JPEGs and won't affect raw images. Monochromatic color allows you to add color to your black and white images. The x-axis along the horizontal plane adds either magenta or green, while the y-axis, the vertical plane, allows you to add blue or red. So you can give it a warm feeling or a cool feeling, or if you want to green the tone just a little bit to make it look faded, you can do that as well. The grain effect allows you to add additional grain to your image. You can either add roughness or size. Roughness adds a little bit more contrast to it, while size just changes the overall size of the grain. The color chrome effect allows you to increase the range of tones available for rendering colors that tend to be highly saturated. So that's going to be your reds, your yellows, and your greens. Color chrome effects blue 
increases the range of tones specifically for rendering blue. And so you have the option of choosing weak or strong. Dynamic range protects the luminosity values in the midtone to highlight area. So the greater the percentage, the more that it's going to bring down your highlights essentially. Your tone curve is basically your highlight tones and your shadow tones combined. So if you go to the positive on your highlight tones, you're basically increasing the lighter grays and making them more white. If you take away, you're bringing down your highlights. And for your shadows, if you add to your shadows, you're making your darker grays more dark. While if you take away, you're basically lifting your shadows at this standpoint. So you can push and pull in camera to get a better exposure. Color adjust color density. So the greater the number, the more saturated the image is going to be. The lesser the number, the less saturated. I use this when I shoot Velvia. I generally put color to a negative one or negative two. Sharpness basically sharpens or softens outlines. So this increases contrast around the defined edges, making them appear more sharp. Finally, clarity increases or decreases the contrast in the midtones. So if I increase the number, I'm going to add more drama. If I decrease the number, I'm going to add a softer tone, almost like an Orton effect. Now that we can see the image quality properties individually, the real fun comes when you mix them all together. Here are some images that I've taken around my neighborhood where I've changed the highlight tone, shadow tone, maybe it pushed a little bit towards red in the white balance, but it gives you a plethora of different looks that you can create right in camera. So I know this tutorial was a long one today. I appreciate you hanging in there, and hopefully these custom film simulations will spark a little bit of your creativity. Take care. Have a great one.